What's going on everybody? It's new here. If you can hear talking in the background, that's just my roommate on the next side in the next room. He's talking right now. We're actually in my house, but we rented out my old room to uh, somebody else. So it's just forewarning you if you hear any talking in the background. Uh, not the point of the video though. This video, so, um, pardon me also, I've got a little bit of allergies, so I'm a little bit congested, but... So I just watched the first two episodes of A Series of Unfortunate Events, the Unfortunate Events series by Netflix. Uh, they released it last night at 12 o'clock midnight or whatever, or apparently it was, I was looking at Twitter and there was something going on with like when they were releasing it, so they didn't actually release it on time. Um, but yeah, so I watched the first two episodes and I wasn't going to do this video after watching one episode, but then I decided I wanted to watch a second episode just to kind of get a better idea and a better uh, grip on my first impressions with the show. And my first impressions of the show, not very good. Um, I'm not very satisfied with the direction that they're going in with it. I think that if I'm just being perfectly blunt, it's just not very good. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, number one, you just can't replace Jude Law as Lemony Snicket. Uh, the guy that they got, he kind of reminds me of the guy, I forgot what his name is, but the guy that plays at, in Ash vs. the Evil Dead and the guy that made Tobey Maguire like, do all this stuff like you know, uh, tie his shoelaces and fix his tie in Spider-Man 2. I forgot what his name was. Um, he was also in the Amazing Spider-Man video game. Excuse me. Um, and he just kind of sounds like that guy. Uh, his voice is very deep. Um, and, like, you know, it's just very weird how in the show, uh, I've watched the first two episodes, and this is not a review, this is just the first impression video, but in the, in the show, uh, they have him basically narrating certain parts of the show and they almost kind of break the fourth wall and he talks over a certain scene or whatever but it's just like it messes with the tone so much i mean kind of not anymore because the tone that they set up in the in the pilot in the first episode it kind of carried on to episode two unfortunately i was hoping that they would distance themselves from the pilot and kind of focus more on a different tone on the second episode which is why i decided to watch it but that wasn't the case um but the tone of the show is very goofy uh, and, uh, not, um, dark, I suppose is a good word for it because the movie and also the books were pretty dark, uh, especially the books. Um, even Jim Carrey's, uh, unfortunate events movie had, um, you know, it's a lighthearted kind of funny moments or whatever, where he was very Jim Carrey, but very theatrical, but that's kind of how, that's kind of how Count Olaf is. Um, I, I myself, when I read the book, didn't picture him being as theatrical, uh, but Jim Carrey's performance was very memorable for being theatrical. Um, but I pictured Count Olaf being a lot more heinous, a lot more menacing, um, but at the same time, you know, still kind of being theatrical a little bit. Um, you know, almost like the Joker in a sense. Uh, and I guess you could say kind of like, um, kind of like a mix of both Heath Ledger and Jack Nicholson's Joker. Uh, and excuse me, I'm going to pause one moment because I really have to blow my nose, but I'm going to do this real quick. So one second. All right, so sorry about that. But yeah, so um, yeah, like the movie had a darker tone to it than the show does. The show, also from the way that they shoot everything, it's all like, it seems almost like it's all during the day. Uh, there's uh, an absurdly large amount of CG for whatever reason there is in this. For like, there's, there's no reason at all for that to be that way. Um, the city that the Baudelaire children live in, uh, they didn't really show much of it in the movie, but in the show they do show a little bit of it. And it's got this weird CG, colorful cat in the hat, Mike Myers type look to it, and I just don't like it. Um, it's just weird. And uh, Sonny Baudelaire, the infant, the baby, the youngest Baudelaire, they're CGing her to certain parts when they put tape over her mouth, because I guess they didn't want to put tape over her actual infant's mouth, which is probably a good idea, but it's like it just looks weird when you see it. She freaking like you know, her uh, infant cries or whatever, they have like, you know, text underneath them and stuff so you can read what she's saying. And then like, she's like freaking playing poker or whatever. She's playing with the guy with the hooks, the henchman with the hooks, who I barely remember who he was played by in the movie and kind of how he was played or whatever. But you know, this show just basically gives you so much more of an appreciation for the casting that was done in the movie. And what we got was actually um, very well done and very well casted. Um, I do like Neil Patrick Harris as uh, as Count Olaf. It almost seems like you know he's like the you know the next best thing for playing Count Olaf, or could have been the best thing if if Jim Carrey wasn't cast at first, 
or you know even with this thing it's almost like a reboot like a, like another thing where they're you know having to the difficulty and the task of getting another actor portray this certain character which is always an issue for anything but like i think that they did a really good job of casting him but in the same time some of the dialogue just feels very forced like you know that line that nobody seemed to like in adventures age of, age of ultron where uh, Captain America says language, and they're all talking about how forced and awkward that joke felt, and it just popped up through the entire movie and stuff. That's pretty much what they do in this show. It's like they have these jokes in here that seem to pop up that all the characters know about, like it's breaking the fourth wall and stuff like that, and it just keeps reoccurring. And it's just like, all right, calm down with the joke. You know, it's it's been overused already. It's overplayed. And so far, I haven't really had a moment where I kind of just had a gut wrenching laugh. It's just more been like a. <laughs> Or a little chuckle at some somewhat some witty writing that they did with Count Olaf and everything to kind of make him a little bit uh, funny and play on words and stuff like that. But you know, it's just like uh, Justice Strauss. Um, even the actress that played her was the actress from School of Rock, which was really funny. That actually played uh, the principal uh, who was into Stevie Nicks and stuff. And it was funny seeing her again because I hadn't seen anything from her from since School of Rock. But even her portrayal of Justice Strauss was felt very weird like it's almost like they're trying to be too much of too many different things like they're trying to be like the old movie they're saying some of the same lines almost in the same way uh you know almost to the point where you could repeat like what they're saying because they said it exactly the same way that they did in the movie uh, and some of these lines are you know lifted straight from the book obviously or the books and that's fine but like you want to avoid retreading the same path and kind of some of the stuff that they've done it's just guys first impression is just it's just not good and i see some people that are like oh thank you netflix for giving us the unfortunate events that we deserve i'm just like nah fuck that i'm gonna be real with you guys it's, i love this series i grew up with this series i can honestly tell you right now that the movie is the better way to go um i know the movie you know when i was younger i was disappointed that they crammed everything into one thing and that they kind of rushed the ending a little bit but they did a solid job of cutting it off where they wanted to cut it off and they had a clear idea what they wanted to do this 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 version of unfortunate events is almost like somebody had some idea of what they wanted to do a clear idea but they didn't get any feedback on how it should be done from like other people of like well i feel like maybe you're spending too much time here or whatever it's like nobody had a discussion there was just one person and they were like yeah let's do this and we're gonna go with this and they kind of took control of over everything you know kind of as a director should but as a director you should also take people's feedback and you know listen to the writers and just kind of go into it as an agreement but then you're the one in charge of calling the shots in terms of the scenes and everything but uh what else i mean like i said i watched the first two episodes um and it's just there's no hook for me there's no thing that makes me want to keep watching it i guess other than the fact that um it's unfortunate events also i think that once we get past the first three books um once we get past you know dr montgomery in the reptile room and uh, I forgot the lady that lived in the house on the edge of a cliff or whatever. I forgot about what her name was. I haven't read the books in years. Like I literally haven't read the books since uh, since I saw the movie, which has been a long time. Um, I mean, I've read all of them though, up to you know Penultimate Peril and the end, which were the last two books or whatever. And I even had a um, special Beatrice book that had like a silhouette of Beatrice's head in it and it had like all these different cutout things or whatever i never really got into that book though for some reason i, I couldn't understand it because it wasn't like a book book that you actually read though um, but that's another thing is that part of the interesting thing is that they're focusing a little bit more on the um group uh that they're you know baldelaire children's parents was involved in which we saw a little bit in the movie um and you know dr montgomery is a part of it and everything and they're all talking about the spyglass and everything that secret organization and they're very blatantly, you know, showing their parents like Will Arnett plays the father. And it's just so weird to see the parents and, um, you know, if some of this sounds bad to you, like you're like, what? They're showing the parents like wait, I don't remember them ever showing the parents in the book. I remember them saying something about them being in Peru. I remember that. Um, and, you know, they did definitely focus on that a little bit. And uh, another thing is that, like I said, the guy that plays, I know it can be bouncing all over the place. I'm just kind of juggling these thoughts in my head. But like uh, Jude Law was just very, uh, not stoic, but like um, very dark. They silhouetted him the entire time, which is what they should do with Lemony Sticket. He's supposed to be uh, a writer without a face, yet they blatantly put this guy in front of everybody who's breaking the fourth wall, talking to the audience all the time, and it shows absolutely no emotion. It's like the actor didn't even want the role. That's how bad it looks 
to me and i know that's all intentional and everything but like it's like he has no empathy and jude law definitely had some empathy in his voice when he would read and give you narration and document uh what was happening to the baltimore children but this person this actor just guys it's just not very good if i'm being perfectly honest with you i mean i can admit to the fact that you know my favorite harry potter book is the the triwizard tournament the goblet of fire but i can admit to the fact that that's my least favorite movie i think that movie was just all over the place and just not very good um and my favorite movie is the order of the phoenix which ironically was my least favorite book because harry is just yelling at everybody in that book is so damn annoying and there's like literally nothing really going on but they made the right decisions with the fifth movie and did away with all that yelling in the book and everything and it just turned out to be a better project and i like you know like i said i like some of the actors in this this uh this incarnation like i like the main actors count olaf i like the girl that plays Violet, who is also the girl that plays the young Supergirl on the Supergirl TV show, the young Cara Danvers. Um, she's very pretty, reminds me a lot of Emily Browning, who played Violet uh, before. Actually, a lot, you know, that's kind of like how she looks. They both have very big lips, and their eyes kind of look a little bit the same. The boy who plays Klaus, I like him, I think he looks good. I can't remember who played Klaus in the original one, but I did like him too. Obviously, Sonny's a baby, not really going to have any acting chops, except for her CG weird parts or whatever. Um, and then, you know, the mask and how they had the, the mask sequel or whatever that had the baby dancing and like all the CG on it. That's kind of what Sonny looks like. It's very weird. Um, and then the, what is it? Uh, you know, like I said, Count Olaf, Neil Patrick Harris is Count Olaf. Those three are all good, but the writing is just forced and not very good. The settings, you know, kind of look like they're copying too much off of the original movie. Like they're not separating themselves. It just looks like the show has no identity of its own which is very disappointing and i'm not very interested in continuing the show at this point um i am going to because it's unfortunate events and i want to see it like i said once we get past the first three books i think it'll be a lot more interesting i think that the uh you know involvement of their parents and showing what's happening to me is an interesting side story um but the rest of it's just not very good guys and I just don't know what else to say. I'm just hoping it gets better, but I have a feeling that it's it's not because of what's going on with the second episode. Um, so yeah, so unfortunately, unfortunately, that's uh, my first impressions of it. So anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Um, and I guess, you know, just leave me your feedback on what you think of the show. I know some people are liking it and they enjoy the intentional kind of things that they have done with it, but I'm I'm just not a fan. I think that they could have done so much more and so much better. This kind of lets you know that Netflix is not the end-all be-all and they're not gods when it comes to making, you know, productions. So anyways, thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.